I just also driving past in a Nissan Leaf with the uh, with the charging port open. So sort of people being oblivious or possibly willfully ignorant that drives me loopy. Add that to a recent at time recording discussion, or possibly argument, I had with an atheist on one forums, and you can imagine I get used to dealing with idiots on a regular basis. You might say I'm just willfully ignorant myself, but I often say that the best form of reason is seeing as many points of view as possible. If you bear in mind that, I think it was earlier this week, or even last week, I was driving from the locals back to her residence, tucked away in the deep folds of the Scottish borders, who is a notorious flat earther. I don't name and shame, I'm not that sort of person. But, as far as I can tell, both of them, the Flat Earther, who is hyper-religious as well, as many people would expect, and the atheist I was debating with, seem to be more interested in giving their opinions then learning. Though I was hopeful that the atheist I was chatting to was getting the understanding a bit more. Because when I showed him, when I told him to look at his arguments and basically told him, who would you think would be the religious one? So early in the debate, he admitted he would assume he was the religious one. Just by the way he was arguing. Unfortunately, he fell back into the self-same arguments or the self-same tactics during the later debate. Whether that's continuing or not, I honestly don't know. I'll see if I can dig out the screenshots and show them because it was quite an interesting debate. A long drawn out one, but an interesting one nevertheless. This one was an interesting one. So I'll just zoom in to the top to see where it started. I don't remember what that post was about. I think it was about how people were suggesting that a family should be a whopping big one a whopping big monogamous family, rather than a uh, just a couple of females with a baby. Personally, I accept all, but I do. But I think I just suggested mostly to the uh, people. How do you suggest they feed that many kids? And that's where this debate started off, as you can see. Just gently scrolling down. As you can see, he's somewhat happy to throw all manner of blind accusations. Can I zoom in on some sections, assuming it lets me. That was from the beginning. Yeah, sometimes it gets rather ridiculous. As you can see, he's offering all manner of sources. I would say I'm being honest here and pointing out how some sources get collated because of things. 
because of certain areas. I can say that JW is bound to bring together things that support its argument rather than actually balances things out. As you can see, he's not accepting that at all. And yes, there's a few more of these. I need to zoom in on these just to show you what I mean. Though that's not a very clean image. I think you'll struggle to... So I'm going to hide his profile as much as possible. I'll see if I can leave links to this so you can actually read it, but it might be difficult. don't know how long that's up, and he might be deleting it for I know. It's quite difficult when these things switch out, so just backing out a bit. There we go. Pause at any time you like to read it. And I think... Yes, this is the last one. Zooming in. And this is my response. And yes, this was the last one, so that was in the debate. That was a fearsome one, and quite frankly, one that showed he was bashing his head against the wall constantly, not wanting to learn, except that one time he did accept that if he was asking who was who was the religious one in the argument, he would accept he was that. I don't know if I've got that one. Here we are, yes. So that was the one. The fact he accepted it, I thought, was a good sign of progress, but unfortunately he threw himself right back into it. So that shows you can try your best, but ultimately some people just don't want to believe or don't want to accept any sort of reason. You may say that atheists and theists are two completely different sides of the coin, or two completely different areas, but in actual fact I'm pretty sure they are more similar than we might expect. Interestingly enough, someone did a study into what actually makes people more likely to become atheist, and whilst a growing body of thought is that it is reason or rationality. Studies have shown that, that is not the case. Evidence also shows that, in my opinion, because, well, so many people on the forums, both theist and atheist, just bash their heads together. And as I said in a previous video, that should be up by now, as said by a fairy woman, try to use your head for something other than nutting folk. There's no denying that there are a number of religious people, notably religious people as well, and a notable number thereof, who do indeed bash their heads on things to the point where it is ridiculous and wondering why they use it for anything other than nutting folk. Or if they even bother. Unfortunately, despite what people say, it isn't unique to Christians and certainly isn't unique to atheists. You will find people like that on all sides of the debate. There are some fundamental facts that get thrown around or completely ignored by the opposite side. In the case of Christians, the heavy fundamentalists refuse to accept the old earth or even evolution, even though my own studies strongly suggest that they don't in fact conflict with the Bible. Interestingly enough, and I actually did some research on this, 
The church has not been in that much conflict with science over the years. We naturally think it is because it is now and the church was much stronger back in the day. So they would have tried to be pressing things even more. They were less tolerant of things. The thing is, whilst many things, including slavery, homophobia, transphobia, and the like, and certainly the use of exorcisms, was rife during the high years of the church, even the group that we would know as the fundamentalists only really came about in the last couple of centuries. I took a look. It was in the 1800s they appeared. And that's round right about the time that the church was interfering with the with the scientific community. Much more. That was primarily in America, if I remember correctly. As you can see, the uh, fundamentalist movement only really started off during the 1870s. Um, more than likely due to the fact Darwin's theory of evolution, or Darwin's papers on evolution, had probably been published then. It seems as though they're more interested in the fact that humans came from apes rather than anything else, hence it's more likely an offensive thing. But if we... Uh go to how long the sun's been interfering naturally automatically think with Galileo but that is literally our place in the universe if you think about it it's been around it's only really started people interfering around the 19th century so in, during the latter during the last quarter of it which is technically around the time of the of the fundamentalist movement Are there things that atheists always bash on about that are ridiculous to ignore? Well, the historicity of Christ is a classic one. Some refuse to accept, even now, that Jesus was a historical figure. But anyone with a sensible mind will accept that something happened in the first century, and that there is evidence of someone by the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Whether they have any connection, Jesus Christ or Jesus of Nazareth, is a different matter entirely. That I'm going to allow for, that Jesus Christ may well just be Jesus of Nazareth, who became a legend. A legend being distinct from a myth by the fact that a myth generally has no historical basis and may only be something that came up from, say, an interesting statue, an interesting figure. Or even, like the Giant's Causeway, an interesting feature of the landscape. And so stories grew up around that until it became a myth. So with no historical basis other than a single physical thing. A legend, on the other hand, is someone who is grounded in history, but whose story has blown out of all proportion. Two examples I can think of off the top of my head are Macbeth who was a genuine Scottish Lord who genuinely ruled Scotland for a while. But the story was inflated by Shakespeare to the point where not only was he bewitched by um, witches, but his original title Bane of Glams and then of Cordor was actually of a much smaller standing than his actual chieftaincy, which is most of Scotland. A 
at the time, and the Duncan. Second, and the most obvious one, is Robin Hood. Many people might say, of course Robin Hood is a legend or a myth. He never existed. Well, Tony Robinson did a, did a show on this, did some research, and he found that there was indeed a reference to a Robert Hood in Wakefield. Now many people might say that, no, this isn't Robin Hood, because there's no, because who can, who can call someone Robert, Robin? And uh, wasn't it Sherwood he was in, near Nottingham? Well, not really, because the actual legends, the oldest forms of legends, went back around the 13th century, I think it was. And the Robin Hood there didn't live in Sherwood, but in Barnsdale Forest. Take that into consideration. Add that to the fact that our accepted vision of Robin Hood was that he was, was that he returned home from the Crusades under Richard the Lionheart. Whereas the old legends, the old oral tales, tell of Edward, the comely king, pardoning Robin of his crime and no longer keeping him as an outlaw. Again, Tony Robinson delved into this and narrowed it down to Edward II. Now, you may say, what's this got to do with Jesus? Well, it's those aspects, some basic aspects of the story. Robin being an archer, an outlaw, and pardoned by the king. He just grew out of all proportion. Yes, he was a holy man, he was a Catholic, and attended mass when he could. But that did not mean he joined the Crusades. In fact, the bow was not the preferred weapon of any crusader, as far as I'm aware, despite what the recent Robin Hood film I don't even remember his name. The lad who, the lad who played Robin. He played Eggsy in The Kingsman, I know that, but I don't remember all of it. Either way, he, as people pointed out, that sort of formation was far more suitable for guns rather than longbows. It's those sort of things that Jesus stood out for, or those sort of things that could have been attended to Jesus, put on him, given his story. He was a good man, a man of integrity, whom other people didn't like. So what did they do? They crucified him. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that Jesus was indeed crucified or at least people were crucified in the manner that was depicted in the Bible. Whether he rose again, that's another matter. And I know some people might say that the apostles died believing that he rose again, but I think we need to remember what people were asking them whilst torturing them, if indeed they were tortured. 
I need to do some research, but I'm pretty sure they were asking if it was a conspiracy. To say, come now, you removed the body from the tomb, you drugged the guards, you... You moved the tomb, you moved the body, so you can claim that your friend rose from the dead. This has gone too far, come on, Ona. And they never gave in, because it never happened. How is this believed to be true? Many people use the argument of Watergate. I don't know the exact details, again, I have to look it up. But essentially, some of the richest men in the world, richest men in the country, had a big secret, and yet under questioning, under gentle questioning, I'm sure, maybe, maybe fierce questioning, but definitely not torture, they caved after about three weeks. The apostles went to their deaths. It seems as though this very conspiracy was discussed during the uh, first and later centuries, um, known as the stolen body hypothesis. But I'll leave a link to this in the description when I get the chance. As you can see, it's going to be an elaborate plot that would backfire more than likely on the perpetrators, namely the, uh, namely the disciples. And that would require a lot more motivation than just Oh, we want to make our mate look like he was resurrected. No, that would not have worked. Like I said, I'll leave it all in. We need to be bribed. The Roman guards had no interest in that. The body of Christ would need to be uh, disposed of, and so forth. So there's a lot of things in there. Whether or not that was part of the reason they were tortured is something I could not ascertain. So I'll hold my hands up and say that was probably me thinking too much into it. But it's certainly one of the reasons they would have been tortured if they were considered such. So more than likely they were being persecuted for their faith. And that's something I will own up to. I did make that mistake. You may be asking, what about the, what about the martyrs? What about various contradictions? I'll cover those in later videos because they're far too much to cover in a single one, especially when they require a fair bit of research. So doing it on the fly is not sensible. But to deny Jesus was ever existing is very much like denying evolution. If you know what you're looking for, it's not hard to find. And quite frankly, you need to be ignoring a lot of the evidence to prove otherwise. So that just shows that rationality isn't a defining trait of atheism any more than it is of Christianity. Especially when, you, when your only experience of it is on the front lines of the forums, where people are constantly throwing their heads together. At the end of the day, that your side is the more sensible. But you need to be the evidence of that. And by denying basic things, refusing to do any research, and failing to account for the sensible arguments that people give, you're going nowhere. Nowhere at all.
So remain humble, do your research, stay safe, and God be with you, my friends.